So the next way that you might um, think about a machine learning algorithm is an unsupervised one. So this is where I don't have a bunch of labeled data. I don't have these emails are spam, these are not. Instead, I have a bunch of data that I want the system to make sense of in some way. So maybe I want it to make clusters. So I might give it a bunch of images. Turns out my images all turn out to be trees and people. And it doesn't know that, but it might realize that, hey, trees tend to be green. All these images tend to have the same sorts of features. I'll make a cluster about those. These other images, cluster them over here. Um, so it's finding some underlying structure in the data. Um, and you can't necessarily say ahead of time what that structure is going to be, but it can be really useful for understanding big sets of data. For instance, I'm going to show you an example with understanding news in a little bit. OK. The last type of sort of category of machine learning um, is reinforcement learning. And this one is a little bit different in that you don't have all of your experience ahead of time. I don't give you a bunch of stuff. You learn, then I go deploy this thing in the real world. Instead, this, uh, say, a robot learns in real time. So it figures out, hmm, I got a reward. Something good happened to me. All right, I should adjust my behavior for that to happen more often. Or something bad happened. I fell off a cliff. I'll adjust my behavior <laughs> so that doesn't happen. Um, so going to pause momentarily here to show you a video of a robot actually uh, doing some reinforcement learning. So the video I'm going to show you is a robot learning to walk. So this robot, all right, restarting, yeah. Um, OK. The robot has this little manipulator, and all it receives information about is just which way its wheels are going. Um, and it gets sort of a plus, yay, when its wheels are going forward, and a negative when its wheels are going backward. And it doesn't know ahead of time that, for instance, this pushing backwards will make its wheels go forward. And so you see it sort of struggling, kind of working. Oh, oh, we're going backwards. Um, and so it's adjusting, and slowly, it's now doing a better job at going forward most of the time. So it's adjusting its behavior. And it's sort of learned, uh, one thing you notice if you watch this video enough times, it's learned to kind of pick up its manipulator after each thing. So rather than before it was going like this and it would send it backwards, now it's actually picking it up. But no one programmed that in. It learned that from its experience of getting positive and negative rewards. Yay. OK. <laughs> <laughs> so that was machine learning. The n next two topics I'm going to talk about both involve machine learning, um, but they're applied in specific ways. Um, so natural language processing is all about understanding what language means, understanding written text, uh, speech recognition, um, and also generating language. So generating, say, a response. Uh, if I ask the computer a question, it has to both understand the language and figure out how to respond. Um, this is sometimes known as an AI complete problem. So when, you, when I talk to you, you're drawing on your lots of experience. You know about things in the world. You know what makes sense. You know that cats eat fish makes sense. Televisions eat fish makes less sense. But that isn't really anything about the words, right? Um, <laughs> and one of the ways that They've, we've been able to get around some of those issues um, is with statistical NLP, which is basically take lots of text, figure out information from it, compile it in some way, process it in some way, and use that to figure out what sorts of things make sense. Um, so for instance, if you look at, so Google has provided lots of uh, basically tables with probabilities of how often do these three words, these four words appear in a sequence, um, which means that, for instance, you can predict uh, if I type three words, you can predict the next word. So you've seen that when you do Google search, you type in and it gives a suggestion of what it thinks you're going to type next. Um, and the, reason, the way it's able to do that is that it has access to so much corpus data, um, which is cool. So one thing you can actually figure out from that is that television hardly ever appears as the subject of the verb eats, cats, relatively frequently. And so it can actually figure out one of those sentences is a good sentence, one of them is not, um, which is nice. So Natural language processing is hard. Many people who've, at least until the last couple of years, had experience with something, dealing with one of these systems said, it's a pain. 
I try to get it to recognize my speech, I'm talking to my bank, and it can't understand what I'm saying. It's impossible, this is never gonna work. Um, but it's been getting better and better, and one thing that a lot of people, I think, have had good experiences with, when I played with my friends, it seems to understand me, uh, is the Siri thing. So Apple on their iPhone, they said, let's put out this assistant that does speech recognition, um, so it figures out what you're trying to say, and it takes actions based on that, what you say. So it might do a search looking for something, it might, as in this example, change my calendar about this appointment, so it actually does something, um, which indicates at least some level of understanding in the sense of being able to respond in an appropriate way to what you said. Um, so that hopefully um, is making natural language processing a little bit less of just, that's a pain for me um, in most people's minds. So I promised you an unsupervised learning example. Um, this is one about natural language processing because in NLP we oftentimes have lots and lots of text that we want to summarize um, in some easy way, or we want to understand what are people saying. So you have lots of news, how do you comprehend that? So this is something from the STAT news group here at Berkeley. Um, what they did is they fed it a bunch of news documents, basically all the news documents from, uh, I think, Wall Street Journal, Washington Post, a bunch of things, um, over a couple month period. And they asked it to figure out basically how these articles varied. So what things tend to occur together, what words don't tend to occur together. Um, and they told it what countries, what are different countries, and these are plotted by where they fall um, on these axes. So on the x-axis, um, you see on one hand we have first military growth leaders, um, and people are talking about those with particular sets of countries. Um, they don't tend to talk about those words uh, they don't tend to say those words when they're talking about debt, crisis, Merkel, country, euro. So that was all the European debt crisis, and you see the European countries tend to cluster over there. When you're talking about those countries, these are the words that come up more. Um, and it found these words automatically. So it wasn't that someone said, I think the European debt crisis is being talked about, let me put that in. Instead, it uncovers these are sort of the biggest variations that occur in the data set. Um, so that's an example of something you might want from unsupervised learning um, and often interacts with HCI. So what is the best way to represent information so that people will understand it? <laughs>